Okay, so this is a very, very brief video on modulus. This was requested by Austin some time ago, so I just want to get it over and done with, and also said I'd cover it in the um, live stream yesterday. So let's just get this done. Before we go into the questions, the examples I'm going to use are similar to the ones you'll find in exercise 2G in your textbook. So if you want to practice any of the skills I'm going to kind of remind you of, feel free to hit those guys up. Let's start from the beginning. What is a modulus? It is also known as the absolute value. It turns things positive. And there's two types of graph transformation that you generally have to deal with. The one where the modulus is covering the entire function and the other one where the modulus is just touching only the x. Okay? Now, for the first one, where the modulus is on the whole function, all the y-coordinates become positive. In the case where it's just touching the x, all the x-coordinates become positive. What does this actually mean in terms of drawing a graph? Let's have a quick look here. So let's say f of x looks like that rather shoddily drawn quadratic that you see. If the modulus is touching everything, you see all the y-coordinates become positive, and therefore you see the reflection in the x-axis. Now, if the modulus is solely on the x then you see a reflection in the x-axis. So you get this sort of W shape. The reason why is everything that happens on the positive side is now mirrored on the negative side in terms of the x-coordinates. Yeah, so what's happening is that everything that's, every negative x-coordinate um, is now gonna behave as like its positive counterpart. And that's why it looks like that. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, now an actual example, which is incredibly similar to one in the textbook. Um, here you've got f of x is one third x minus two to minus 1 with the x minus 2 in the modulus sign, and I've drawn the graph. What do I need to do to get credit? I need to find intercepts, and if you can find the maximum and minimum point, if you can find one, that's great too. First of all, the intercepts. We need for this to be an intercept for on the, say, let's say, the y-axis, that will happen when x equals 0. So all you need to do is substitute 0 into there. 0 minus 2 is minus 2. Obviously, modulus turns it positive 2. Minus 1 plus 2 thirds is negative a third. So that was quite easy. Then you want to find the x-intercepts, and that's a little more challenging. But just think of it this way. You need the bit that goes one-third x minus 2 to basically be positive 1, because 1 minus 1 equals 0. And 0 is what you're looking for here in terms of if it all equals 0, that means it's cutting the x-axis at 0. I'm sorry, it's cutting the x-axis. So if you put, say, 5 into there, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 times one-third is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Similarly, minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3, Minus 3 modulus is, let me see, just 3. 3 times a third is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So that's why I got that. So now, the general shape can probably be deduced just from those three points. But how did I find the lowest possible point? Well, I just thought to myself, well, the modulus will never be less than 0, right? So if I assume that it is 0, what's the lowest point you're going to get is minus 1, yeah? And when is it 0? When 1 third modulus x minus 2 equals 0. So when x minus 2 equals 0. So when x is 2. So the lowest point will happen when the x coordinate is 2 and y is minus 1. So therefore we can say the range of this whole function is f of x is greater than or equal to minus 1. Okay, I thought I'd do one more example. And to really understand what the hell is going on in this example, you need to fetch up your textbook Exercise 2G question 7, because this is what this is what it is. So just take a minute, pause the video, and go find it. Um, oh, wait. Okay, that's enough waiting. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to walk you through most of the solution, mainly because I want you to finish it yourself. Just to give you, in case you haven't got the book with you, you should. It basically says, here's f of x, which is a modulus function. Here's g of x, which isn't. Um, if you equate them to each other, that's got one real root. That means there's one solution to it. Um, find out what b is. So if you look at the function here, there goes x plus b. It's not x plus 6. It's, x, it's 2 modulus x plus b, close modulus, minus 8 equals minus 10 minus x. So that has one solution. Find it is basically the question. And I'm just going to run you through the, a brief methodology of how you do that. So I equate them. I simplify them. And then what I've... I've simplified them as much as I possibly can. And hopefully there's no mistakes in that. If they are, like, obviously... Um, feel free to take a shot in the comments. Um, then I'm going to use the squaring method for two reasons. First of all, it's telling me about roots. And every time anything tells me about roots, I immediately, my mind goes back to discriminant. And I realise that might not be true for you anymore because you haven't done this since, like, first year. But if someone's telling you you've got one real root, I'm thinking quadratic. So I'm going to use the modulus way of killing... Sorry, the quadratic way of killing a modulus, square both sides. 
this gives me this beautiful quadratic right here. So I'm just going to try and make that as bad, not as bad as possible. So you just expand it. That should say x squared. I don't know where the x has just rubbed itself out. So it's x squared plus 2dx plus b squared equals x squared plus 4 plus x plus 1. Collect like terms over here. Find a, b, and c and plug it into the discriminant. And I kind of want you to do that in your own time and see if you can find out what b is. Okay, so that's another type of question. I just wanted to kind of showcase this way of dealing with the modulus, which is squaring both sides. If you feel like more time needs to be spent on the modulus, let me know in comments or um, via Microsoft Teams. Bye.